Federal student loan interest is set to resume in September. The University of Toronto starts an XRP validator, a new partnership with Ripple. And once again, it's Binance versus the SEC. I'm Tricky Mick, and these are tonight's topics with Tricky. So let's get right into it. All right, so federal student loan interest is set to resume in September with payment suspension set to expire not long afterward. President Biden's Department of Education told Fox Business that pandemic-related suspensions on federal student loans are now set to expire after months of speculation. Student loan interest will resume starting on September 1st, 2023, and payments will be due starting in October, the Department of Education told multiple outlets this week. We will notify borrowers well before payments restart. Fox News Digital reached out to the Department of Education for comment. Federal student loan payments were paused and interest rates reduced to 0% in March 2020 when President Donald Trump signed the CARES Act in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The student loan pause has since been extended multiple times by the Biden administration. Now Biden, who is running for re-election, has proposed for giving up to $10,000 in federal student loan debt and up to $20,000 for those who receive Pell Grants, a plan that is currently being challenged in court. If Biden were permitted to carry out his plan, he could eliminate a total of $441 billion in student debt from more than 40 million borrowers, according to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Education Secretary Miguel Cordona previously stated that the administration intended to resume normal debt repayment expectations approximately 60 days after the Supreme Court made a ruling. If the court does not publish a ruling promptly, the administration is prepared to resume payments 60 days after June 30th. So what do you think about this? Do you think that this is the right move? Do you think that they should continue delaying the loan repayments? Do you think that the interest rates should be zero? Uh, as far as I go, I didn't really like that they paused the payments, but I also don't like that they have interest rate. I don't think that there's any reason that we should be paying interest on our school loans to get the education we need, to get the jobs we need. Um, that's not to say that it's the right choice for everybody. For those that it is the right choice, we shouldn't be punishing them for making good decisions. Which brings us to our next uh, spot segue about schooling. So Canada's largest university starts XRP Validator in new partnership with Ripple. The University of Toronto, the largest university in Canada by enrollment, plans to start an independent XRP ledger validator, which primarily processes payments in a new partnership with Ripple as it seeks to support the next generation of the crypto industry. The move is part of Ripple's University Blockchain Research Initiative, UBRI, in Canada, under which the firm has already invested more than two million in the country's top universities and colleges over five years, according to a press release. The newest UBRI partnership helps to grow a program that is already supporting important blockchain and crypto technology research in Canada while providing students with opportunities to acquire technical skills for a crypto native career, the statement said. The University of Toronto joins current Canadian UBRI partners, University of Waterloo and Toronto Metropolitan University, Ripple said in the statement. Ripple launched UBRI in June 2018, committing over $50 million to the effort and partnering with 17 universities from across the world at the time. Since then, it has distributed more than $47 million to its global university partners and increased its commitment to $80 million this year, according to a spokesperson. The initiative comes at a time when the U.S. is cracking down on the crypto industry, driving some companies to other regions. Coinbase, which was a target of recent SEC lawsuits along with rival Binance, even praised Canada's approach to regulating the crypto industry. As more crypto projects and companies look to build outside of the U.S., creating evergreen educational opportunities and growing a pipeline of talent to achieve widespread adoption is critical to our industry's long-term success, Eric Van Miltenberg, SVP of Strategic Initiatives at Ripple, told Coindesk. Canada, and Toronto in particular, is home to some of the most prestigious business and technical schools in the world and has become a global technology hub, Miltenberg said. Ripple continues to expand its presence in the region to support the next generation of crypto, blockchain, and Web3 leaders through strategic partnerships and funding for these universities. Now, I love this. This is a great thing to see, and I think the United States needs to see some of this coming our way, too. Um, I don't understand why there's so much negativity in some of the policies and political arguments that are happening currently with cryptocurrency. In my opinion, it is one of the most important things to support in today, you know, when a lot of people say that they support the decentralization of 
you know, wealth, power, and technology, but they don't seem to support that when it comes to actually making these policies, which brings us to our next part with the SEC and financing it. Now, a U.S. federal judge on Tuesday rebuffed SEC's request to order a freeze on Binance.us assets, providing the parties could agree on limits. And it says again here, a U.S. federal judge has ordered crypto exchange Binance, its local affiliate Binance.us, and the Securities and Exchange Commission to attend a mediation conference on Wednesday to hash out restrictions on operations as the regulators' case against the company is continued. While the SEC alleged in its suit that the Binance entities sold unregistered securities in violation of U.S. laws and later moved to obtain a temporary restraining order to freeze Binance.us assets, D.C. District Court Judge Amy Berman Jackson said during a Tuesday hearing that there was absolutely no need for such an order if the parties could agree on limits. Ahead of Tuesday's hearing, Binance.us said freezing the company's assets would effectively end the business. Negotiating the limits would, in the interim, allow the firm to continue operations. Judge Jackson, during the hearing, showed concern that a requirement to set up another hearing within two weeks did not give the court enough time to go through the thousands of pages and documents and exhibits received by the parties involved. What I'm looking for is some variation of what we already have. I think the nitty grit of it is better handled by all of you than by me, Judge Jackson said during the hearing, adding an order crafted by her may not satisfy either party. In a Wednesday order, the first mediation session was set for June 14th at 2.45 p.m. Eastern Time before Magistrate Judge Zia M. Faruke, who has a former prosecutor, conducted several federal crypto investigations. Faruke has previously praised blockchain tracing technology as a powerful tool and called the fear among regulators of unhosted crypto wallets held outside of exchange fiction not back. So what do you think? Do you think that this is the right way for the SEC to be moving? Do you think that um, some of the cryptocurrency we are looking at are securities and not commodities? Um, you know, comment below, like, subscribe, and let's get talking about what you think about these type of things. Have a good day. I'm Tricky, and these are tonight's topics with Tricky.